PBC, also called primary biliary cholangitis, is a rare disease and is most common in women over 40. In that group, women over 40, it affects about one out of a thousand people. PBC also affects men, but for every 10 women with PBC, there's perhaps one man with PBC, so it's much more common in women than men. PBC is often uh, without any symptoms at the time it's diagnosed. So a woman may go in to see a doctor for another purpose, say an annual checkup, and on a lab test, the doctor may see signs that the liver is not behaving the way it should under normal circumstances. And based on that assessment, may go on to get other tests or refer the patient to a specialist to help figure out the situation. The prevalence of PBC um, in the population that's most affected, that's to say women over 40, is about one in a thousand. So often when people are initially diagnosed with PBC, it comes as a real surprise to them because they may have no symptoms whatsoever. Some patients may have itching or fatigue, but may not realize that that's part of an underlying illness. Over time, PBC can progress, and in some people, the itching and the fatigue become really important problems. And aside from that, the liver can progress as well. So initially, there may be few liver symptoms, but over time, there can be damage to the liver, um, and that damage can lead to things like jaundice or yellowing of the skin, and ultimately even a need for a liver transplant. Sure. The diagnosis of PBC can be very tricky. It's an unusual disease, so most doctors are not as familiar with it as, as they might be for a more common disease. Typically, a patient will come in with no symptoms for a regular visit, and their doctor may get, as part of that regular visit, some normal lab tests. In those normal lab tests, they may find that one of the liver tests, alkaline phosphatase, sometimes called ALKFOS or ALP, is high, higher than normal. Based on that test, they may go on to do further tests or refer to a specialist. One further test that could be pretty typical would be to do an ultrasound of the abdomen to look for evidence of other trouble related to the liver or around the liver. Um, and another very important test that's quite specific for PBC is a um, AMA test. This is a test for an autoantibody um, or a part of the immune system that's attacking the liver that's very specific for PBC. Typically the first medicine that's used is a medicine called UDCA or Ursodiol. This is a medicine that's been approved for about 20 years and uh, for many patients it can uh, make a big difference in terms of the long-term health of their liver. Not all patients respond or respond adequately and some patients don't tolerate it very well. For those patients, there's a recently approved new treatment. So now there's two, two medicines approved for the treatment of PBC. The other medicine is called a beta-colic acid, or Ocaliva. And that medicine is reserved for patients who are poorly responsive to UDCA or don't tolerate it very well. Interestingly, um, the additional research that went into the development of that new medicine has spurred a lot of interest in doing even more research on PBC, and that's great news for patients, because the more we learn about the disease and the more treatments they have available, the better that they can control their disease and get back to the lives they want to.